Hello everyone. Okay, I'm here with part three, continuing on. And then this man spoke something that really shook my faith. It is because of the next part he shared that I went into fasting ten days to say, Lord, is this true? Can you prove it to me? This man said that every Christian has got an angel serving that Christian. Now we know the Bible says angels are ministering spirits to us. He said that when people pray, the answer comes in the hands of the angel. The angel brings the answer like we can read it in the book of Daniel. Then he said something really tough. If the one who prays knows the spiritual armors and is clothed with them, the answers come by an angel who is also clothed in full armor. If the one who prays doesn't care about spiritual armory, their angels come without spiritual armor. Christians who don't care about what kind of thoughts come into their minds, they don't fight the battle of their minds. Their angels come without the helmet. Whatever spiritual weapon you ignore on earth, the angel doesn't have it as he serves you. In other words, our spiritual armor is not protecting our physical bodies. It's protecting our spiritual exploits. This man said, when the angel is coming, they would focus and look at him and notice the areas which are not covered. And those are the areas they would attack. If he has no helmet, they would shoot at his head. If he has no breastplate, they would shoot at his chest. If he has no shoes, they would make a fire that he is walking in the fire. Now I am just repeating what this man said. Actually, we asked him, can angels feel fire? And you know what he said to us? Remember, this is a spiritual realm. These are spirits dealing with spirits. The battle is intensive, and when they overpower an angel of God, the first thing they target is the answer he is carrying, and they get that from him. That is what they give through the cults, the witchcraft. And people say, I got this because of witchcraft. Remember what the Bible says in the book of James? All good things come from God. So where does the devil get the things he gives to his people? Some people who cannot have children, they go to witch doctors and Satanists and they get pregnant. Who gave them that baby? Is Satan a creator? No, he steals from those who don't pray to the end. Jesus said, pray without ceasing. And then he said, but when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find you still there waiting? Or will you have given up and the enemy would steal what you have prayed for? Then this man said that they are not satisfied with just stealing the answer. They are also interested in detaining the angel, and they start fighting him. And he said sometimes they succeed in holding and binding the angel. And he says when that happens, the Christian is a victim on earth. They can do anything with that Christian because he is totally left without ministry in the spirit. I said to him, do you mean an angel can be held in captivity by demonic forces? This man did not even know the scriptures by the time he was saying all this. He did not know very many scriptures. He was just sharing his experiences. And he said they wouldn't hold the angel too long because as other Christians prayed elsewhere, reinforcement would come and the angels would go free. If the Christian responsible did not pray through, he remains a captive. 
then the enemy sends his own angel as an angel of light to this person. And that is where the deceptions come in. False visions and false prophecies, false leadership, and I mean leading, guidance in the spirit, making wrong decisions of all types. And many times this person is open to all kinds of attack and bondages. And I asked the Lord, I left that dinner so troubled, so troubled, I said, Lord, I don't want even to try and believe this. It removes all my confidence, my security. When I went to seek the Lord, it was ten days. The Lord did two things. He did not only confirm the things I had heard, he opened my mind to see a lot more that this man could not tell us of what happens in the spiritual realm. And two, he led me to see what we are supposed to do as the things are happening so that we are not overcome, but that we can overcome. And we need to know three things and really come to terms with these three things. One, how to operate with the weapons of our warfare. The Bible calls them the armor of God. It is not our armor, it is God's armor. When we use it, we allow God to fight on our behalf. Two, understand the relationship of the ministering spirits, the angels, to our spiritual lives, and to be sensitive to what is happening in our hearts as a leading to what needs to be happening in the spirit concerning us. That brings us to the third thing, that is, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not supposed to come as our servant, serving us and bringing things to us. He does not run to and fro to the Father to tell him what we need. That is the work of angels, but he stands by our side, doing what? Guiding us, teaching us, leading us, helping us to pray the right way. And when these things are happening in the spiritual realm, he tells us, sometimes he wakes you up in the night and says, pray. You say, no, my time has not yet come. And he says, pray now. Why? He sees what is happening in the spirit. Sometimes he says, tomorrow, fasting. You say, oh no, I'll start on Monday. But he understands what is happening in the spirit spiritual realm. We should learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He guides us in the paths of righteousness. Beloved, we've got to stop here. Maybe tomorrow morning we can talk about how we can pray through knowing the battles in the Spirit and how we can break through, how we can maintain our breakthrough once we have scored it. And once we learn this, it becomes enjoyable then we learn one thing. The battle is not ours. The battle is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just stand up. Look someone in the eye and just think about how many times that person could have missed what God had for him. But join your hands if you can, two or three people, and just tell each other there's no need for more defeat we can overcome. There is enough power to overcome. Jesus has already done the whole work. Pray for each other that the Lord will help us to overcome. We should not lose. There is enough grace, enough power for victory. Thank you, Jesus. And that is the end of this um, information that he shared here. I will post the transcript in the comment section, everyone. And I will also try to put these all on a playlist so that you can watch them in order as, as, they're, as they're on a list. Uh, I pray this blesses all of you. God bless you all. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.